Hey, this is Al from Transformational Gaming. Appreciate you coming by. Appreciate you coming to the channel. I want to talk a little bit more about Starfield. Before we do, I will ask you to please subscribe to the channel. Please comment in the comment section and please give this video a like. All right, let's get to it. So Starfield is delayed. And I had a few facts in my last video kind of wrong. And just want to kind of clarify that um, because um, I don't want to just leave that out there and not clarify <laughs> some of the stuff that I said in the last video. But it's just a couple of things that I noticed was that I kept saying Blizzard. And so please forgive me. <laughs> Blizzard is part of the Activision acquisition. So the blizzard is not part of the bethesda team so i just want to clarify that and also as we know the announcement was moved for release of starfield to 2023 so that that game is coming out the first half of next year so that's what they're looking at now instead of having the game having an open they, I mean, I, I guess they can't have that. So, <laughs> they can't have an open date, I guess. So, I uh, just want to clarify that that game is set to release on 2023, the first half of 2023. All right. So, let's go ahead and get into it. So, I listened to Digital Foundry a, a little bit, uh, what they said, but uh, my main thoughts are coming from an article called Twisted Voxel and the title of the article is Starfield Development Struggle Due to Half-Baked Mechanics and I'm just going to kind of read a couple of paragraphs and then talk about uh, my thoughts on it but it says during the latest episode I love the way my phone just does that during the latest episode of King Cast King Fan Man discussed that certain mechanics in Starfield are half-baked and currently not working the way they should be. He mentioned the flying controls of the spaceships as an example of buggy mechanics. King Fan Man clarified that when he said buggy, he didn't mean to imply that there's something wrong with the game. Rather, he intended to say that the mechanics currently aren't smooth and balanced. And he goes on to say, he further commented that the month of March is looking like the likely month of release for Starfield, according to him. Just as Creation Engine was overhauled for prior games, it has also been further overhauled for Starfield. King Fan Man doesn't think that the game will have any social or multiplayer elements like in Fallout 76 and will strictly remain a single player experience. So there's some good and bad in that article. They also talk about the creation engine and stuff. They go on to talk about it. I'll definitely try to remember to put the link to the article in the comment section and in the discussion section. But my thoughts are that just looking at some of and this this video was released in March. So I don't know if there's any other video out there for Starfield, but this current video was released in March. And I have have to say this man, this extended trailer as they call it is pretty pathetic. And you know, it's just a difference. And don't get me wrong. Look, the game industry is down right now. I mean, this is probably the worst I've seen the games industry ever. I mean, there are absolutely no games coming out uh, as of note for this year. I mean, this year could be actually worse than 2021. There are no games that is slated to come out this year. Only real game that has came out this year. And I'm talking about AAA games because let's be honest, we all play the triple a games hardly anybody play indie games and stuff so and i'm pretty sure there's some indie games coming out and there's you know multiple games that are out right now but i'm talking about games as a triple a base that everybody's excited for 
there are none of that coming out this year. <laughs> like, there's none of it. And they, they say that God of War is supposed to come out. And that's why I haven't really been making any videos because, you know, I don't think God of War is coming out this year. I don't think this game is coming out. And that's why I'm still standing on it. I mean, like I said, the extended trailer for this is pathetic. And really, this is not a trailer. This is just them showing pictures because the game is it's not being worked on right now. I mean, you can just tell they're still in the requirements phase, the development stage. They have not really, I mean, they've got some concept trailer that they display at the end was the same one I had in my last video. But from what I see, in, unless I'm missing something or something came out <laughs> that I don't know that they brought out, there's really not any real assets for this game and the article kind of hits on it they're having trouble with the graphics engine and it's one of those things if i was microsoft i'd be like look why are you guys using this engine that you guys have to recreate every time y'all build a game on <laughs> you know? I mean, some stuff doesn't make horse sense so I'm not necessarily sure that this game is ever coming out because they don't have anything. They don't have any type of level that's been built out for it. They don't have a first level. They don't have, I don't even believe they have characters. Now they said there's some flying mechanics. I guess they got a couple of assets for the game, but a couple of models, but they don't really have a level for the game. And so I have to ask myself, will this game ever come out? Because I don't care if you got three, four, five hundred people working on this game. The fact of the matter is, is that the development process is going to take a while. And so trying to justify that by saying that it's going to be next year, I don't think y'all going to hit next year. I mean, you guys don't have anything. You guys don't have anything. And that's kind of where I am with it. I mean, there's not really any assets, no demos, no really nothing that has been made for the game. It's just kind of a sad state. So, no, I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns. I doubt this game come out. I mean, showing me these pictures is not gaining me any confidence at all in the game. I mean, I just don't think this game is ever going to come out. Concept art for a game that's coming out next year is a bad, bad, bad sign. So, I don't know. This is pretty much it. i probably throw the whole trailer proper on the channel. But outside of that, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Uh, this is kind of confirmation for me that this game isn't coming out. And there's no way you're going to tell me. I don't care if you got 500 people working on it. No. You're not going to be able to finish this game. But I will say this, though, and I will go in and say this, is that I'm pleased to hear that there's no really social aspect multiplayer that is a part of the game. Because God knows this game needs that like a hole in the head. March of next year, believe it or not, is just next year. Next year, you know, this year is almost halfway over with. So, <laughs> so um, these years roll around quick. And uh, I did want to mention something else that I had heard on Digital Foundry that John Lenneman had discussed. And he was saying that games coming out and being produced in a six, seven, eight year you know, life cycle and stuff like that for development is unsustainable. I am inclined to agree with that because if you start getting games that is habitually have a lifespan, a development cycle of five and six years, I can almost promise you that you almost have to have a trillion dollars <laughs> to really have any real significant return. I'm not saying it's that much, but you will have to have a return of like a billion dollars for a six-year game. Now, I know if these games come out in the black in any shape or form I understand if they just break even 
that some will say, hey, it's worth it because we was able, we were able to gain market share due to this game. Sometimes market share is even more important than having a return on the game or have a positive ROI. But I think once we start playing position in consoles, I think that the console industry is going to be in trouble. And it's going to be in trouble because if it's all about market share and positioning and people having access to a specific game, then I think we're going to lose what makes console gaming and gaming gaming. I think it's going to be something else which Microsoft would love to do. Microsoft would love to change to how gaming is presented and how gaming is developed. But the reality of the matter is is that I mean having a five hundred million dollar game, uh six, seven, eight hundred million dollar game and saying, hey look if we can make that back, that's a win. I think the business is going to be in trouble. Business of gaming is what I'm kinda of interested in because six, seven, eight years to build one game that probably 30% of the console holders is going to probably buy. I think that's a recipe for disaster. I just don't think stuff like that happens. I think what's going to have to happen is, is that they're going to have to figure out a way to cut costs and build smaller games. Because the more I hear about the game, the more I get worried. Because... You know, now it's like they're building games that you could basically get through maybe two or three settings, like Horizon Zero Dawn or whatever, right? So you can do like two or three settings of getting through the main story, and then like there's this big, vast game. Now, let's be honest, I, I don't think that people are going to go back and continue those those journeys. I think there's a segment of the pop, uh, population that who buys the game that will probably go back and, and, and uncover all of those mysteries but those mysteries have to be extremely interesting and i think having a game that is that long and that big and then you can just do a few things to complete it i think what you will have to do is is just figure out a way to use those same assets and build into the game you know a part two because like after a while man it's just not going to be worth it i think video games has gotten so you know realistic and hyper realistic that having games that come out without reusing assets i just think it's just i think you're going to get into a situation where there's not going to be enough games <laughs> To be able to satisfy everybody because all of them are going to be on hold. All of them are going to be delayed. And releases are going to be used as marketing tools instead of realities. I mean, because the f fact of the matter is, is that if you haven't figured out how to use a, a graphics engine by now or after a, a game or two, then it's probably better for you to use a, a more efficient <laughs> Um, way of um, building these graphic engines and again these life cycles of, of 10 year basically lifespan of development I think it's not healthy for the developers but it's also not healthy for the industry I just think that, that that's just too long to build a game and God help you man I mean what that's going to do is it's going to have less games green light it and it's just going to be these one or two games that everybody interested in and we wait in five and six years for and it's, these are console lifespan games now yes of course microsoft can afford to do that they can say hey look here's 60 games that are being developed simultaneously and all of them cost 80 million dollars you know 800 million dollars 500 million dollars 400 million dollars whatever the price tag is you talking about hundreds of millions of dollars to make and you talking about 80 games you have to be really making hand over fist money and the question is going to be where's the revenue going to come from because it's not going to come from building games so i don't know i'm on the side of john Lennon as far as that discussion is concerned like that's got to be a way to release games that uses the same assets uh that uh the prior game used to tell a different story if you're going to make these huge arcane giant worlds 
I just think there's got to be a way to condense, reuse these worlds and these assets and maybe update them. But you got to be able to reuse them and you got to be able to tell a different story and it's got to be compelling. And to me, that's where the heart of video games are nowadays, especially when it comes to gameplay. You're going to have to be able to change that as well. So tell me what y'all think. What do y'all think about the future of gaming? This is pathetic, man. I mean, look at this. This is pathetic. <laughs> this is pathetic. This is all they have. Uh, they got storyboards. That's it. Anyways, Alpha Transformational Gaming, and may the truth set you free. Later.